If you're considering doing a coding bootcamp to start a new career in tech, you will need the right kind of training, coaching, and guidance. Let's face it, college tuition keeps rising, but there's a new kind of education out there to help you learn the skills to get your first job as a software engineer, the coding bootcamp. But what is a coding bootcamp and what is it like? In this video, I'll go over everything you need to know about them and how to go from a code newbie to an employed software engineer. I'll even give you my personal advice to help you prepare for a coding bootcamp. My name is Timor Meister. I'm a coding bootcamp graduate and I'm the co-founder of Career Karma. Five years ago, I didn't know how to code. I tried learning how to code two times on my own and then ended up giving up. Fast forward to five years later, I started Career Karma and I built our iOS and Android app with my co-founders. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I've learned over the years of helping people to replicate my success. So the first common question I get is, what are coding boot camps? Coding boot camps are accelerated technical programs that teach you coding skills you need to know to build applications. Coding boot camps come in all shapes and sizes, mobile development, web development, data science, and UX design. These training programs enable beginners to turn basic coding knowledge into in-depth digital skills that employers are looking for. At the end of your coding program, they get you to be proficient in multiple technologies, such as setting up a database for your application, setting up a server, knowing different frameworks like Ruby on Rails and React, and mastering JavaScript so you can build interactive web pages. Depending on the school, you will also learn technologies like uh, Python and Django, HTML and CSS, PHP, and other stacks. In addition, you may choose to learn other in-demand skills such as full-stack web development, iOS development, data science, digital marketing, UX or UI design. The length of coding boot camps can vary per school. However, each program will help you develop valuable programming skills so you can succeed in this career. The second common question we get is, can I learn how to code on my own? This is a common question and one that we have to unpack to understand. So to really know the difference, you need to understand the benefits of doing a coding bootcamp and what are the downsides of self-teaching. And we uh, created this video to unpack that. In my opinion, there is no downside in doing a coding bootcamp. Before coding bootcamps existed, there were many developers and programmers that were able to be self-taught and get jobs on their own. So we know that it's also a viable path. However, with that said, it's a much more difficult path and it takes a lot more time. Think of professions like professional athletes, chefs, painters, and musicians. There are a number of people who have gone the self-taught route and succeeded. However, when you're starting out with little to no background in coding, boot camps are a quick way and an efficient way to help you become successful in the coding world. I want to emphasize the duration of your career transition is your ultimate goal. And our goal is to help you figure out the path to get there as quick as you can. For many self-taught engineers, it took them several years to uncover and to learn all of the technologies they need to know for them to get their first job. That path is still available to those who have discipline and don't have a high urgency to get a new career. Coding boot camps are for people who see value in coaching and who are interested in getting a job in tech in 12 months or less. Boot camps offer the curriculum, instructors, they prepare you for technical interviews and they support you during the job search. Even though coding boot camps cost money, they often pay for themselves. And if you think about coding boot camps, they have options where you don't pay until you're in a job and if they help you get a job two or three months faster and help you negotiate a higher salary, they will pay for themselves. Many people get stuck on this idea of paying back for the tuition without realizing that with income sharing, you only pay after you get a job. And after you find a job, then it's a lot easier to make those payments and you'll be saving yourself more time. I will cover more about income sharing later in this video. 
The third type of question that we get are, what are the different types of coding boot camps? When you enroll in a coding boot camp, you have to understand that there are several options to choose from based on your individual educational needs. The curriculum from program to program varies slightly. However, the biggest difference is often the schedule. While there are some students who can invest more time in a coding bootcamp. A lot of people have to do a bootcamp on top of uh, taking care of their family and working, which requires a level of flexibility. Here are a few options for you to consider before you begin uh, looking at coding bootcamps. So the first option is part-time coding bootcamps. Typically, part-time coding bootcamps last seven months to a year. Part-time coding bootcamps are perfect options for students who have jobs and other responsibilities that prevent them from dedicating more time and attention to the program. Part-time students usually meet on nights and weekends, as well as learn and build projects during gaps in their schedule between working, doing homework, and taking care of their family. So that's what part-time coding boot camps are. For those who could spend more time, there are also options such as full-time coding boot camps. For those of you who can spend more time and immerse yourself into a bootcamp, those programs are often shorter in length. So the duration of those courses are usually three to six months and they completely immerse you into building real world projects, learning how to code with your peers, and they often leave you with little to no time for any other activities. If you're someone who can commit about 60 hours a week and wants to expand your knowledge in a short period of time, full-time coding boot camps may be the best option for you. So the other option is online coding boot camps. Schedule isn't the only aspect for you to consider when picking a coding boot camp. Online coding boot camps bring a fast-paced learning environment to your home. There are online coding boot camps that are full-time, part-time, and self-paced, so you can do that from the comfort of your home. If you're someone who is self-motivated and you're organized and you simply need that flexibility to learn from anywhere, online coding boot camps are for you. Doing an online coding boot camp doesn't mean you don't get access to mentors or other students. In fact, you're often surrounded by students also going through the online courses with you. They provide you with similar resources such as an in-person bootcamp so you can succeed and become a developer. So the oldest option is in-person coding bootcamps. And people who started out doing traditional coding bootcamps because in the beginning they were the most interactive and in-person programs out there. Selecting an in-person coding bootcamp means that you'll be attending a scheduled class during specific times and in a specific location. In-person coding programs are typically more structured with an instructor and peers available to you immediately just in case you hit a wall or get stuck. These courses are perfect for individuals who have the time and who also want to get more interaction, structure, and focus out of this experience. The last option is self-paced coding boot camps. And perhaps they're also known for being flexible coding boot camps and they're perfect for people who need that flexibility and who cannot commit to a set schedule. Self-paced programs allow you to work completely at your own pace, spending about 25 hours a week. A curriculum is created in a way where you're still able to get access to the instructors and lectures, however, you get complete control over when you have to study and how much. Self-paced classes are great for individuals who need flexibility, but are also self-starters who have the discipline and are not afraid to ask a lot of questions whenever they feel like they might be falling behind. So that brings us to the next question. What kind of experience you need for a coding bootcamp? So in order for you to get into a coding bootcamp, you don't need college degrees, you don't need to have a diploma or anything like that. Let's unpack, why don't you need a college degree? So uh, when it comes to coding boot camps, their job is to help you uh, get a job in tech. And today there are 500,000 jobs that are unopened for people who know how to code. 
and companies like Google and Apple are dropping college degree requirements altogether because they can't find enough talent. So today, you don't need a college degree to get into a coding bootcamp, and you don't need a college degree to get a job at a tech company. So that's the problem that coding bootcamps are here to tackle. They want to help you get a job, and your portfolio is way more important than a college degree. So let's talk about practical experience. When it comes to doing a coding bootcamp, the prospective students are curious how much experience they need in order for them to get accepted. The truth is that it really depends on the program you enter. There are coding bootcamps for, for all experience levels, from total beginner to the more experienced um, students. So we get a common question, which states offer the highest earning potential? Generally, coding bootcamp salary ranges from 60 to 120,000. The reason the range is so wide is people usually make more in places like New York and San Francisco, which is not surprising given that the cost of living in those tech hubs is also super high. So the first year average coding bootcamp salary in San Francisco is about 100,000. In New York City, it's about 90,000. But you always have to take into account the cost of living, right? Because the same salary in Ohio or Minnesota will be uh, lower, but the cost of living in those states is also much lower. So you get a lot more for your buck. When it comes to picking a coding bootcamp, it's always advised to ask the admissions about the outcomes of their graduates and the schools will tell you what is the average salary and how long does it take someone to get a job after their program. So as you're doing this research, it's dependent on the school, it's dependent on the state that you're in, and it also depended on the market for engineers in your city. So there's a lot of questions here, but another one that we get is, what are the differences between coding boot camps and your earning potential? This is a good question to consider because the earning potential will vary from school to school, and it will also vary based on if you're doing a school that's in person in big cities or online anywhere in the country, right? So there's a wide range. Um, my recommendation, like I said previously, is to look at outcome reports from sir.org, ask your admission advisors for salary ranges of their graduates who live in large cities and who live in uh, smaller cities. So the range is really wide. Um, location does play a big factor. The school plays a big factor. So I wish there was an answer for that, but my biggest advice is speak to the students speak to the graduates, and then speak to the admissions in order to understand um, if you're making the right decision by picking the coding school in your city or a coding school that's online. So a big question is often around paying for a coding bootcamp. Figuring out how to pay for the tuition is a big challenge when you're preparing for a coding bootcamp. So let's unpack what financial options each school offers. So aside from traditional loans or paying up front, you should consider a few options like um, choosing a program that offers income sharing, also known as deferred payments or ISAs. So asking your family for financial help could be an option. You can also request that your employer to pay for part of the tuition. And of course, we've seen people who've crowdfunded through GoFundMe. And if you're a veteran, you can also ask your coding school if they accept the GI Bill. So for most schools and for most people in Career Karma, we see them using income sharing as a way to pay for a coding bootcamp. So let's unpack and break down income sharing. What income sharing means is that you don't pay to the bootcamp for this education until you're actually in a job. The school takes a risk on you, and in most cases, you don't even have to pay a deposit in order for you to start a coding bootcamp. And so the way the school makes money to pay their teachers and to provide this education is they take a percentage of your salary once you're in a job. And usually that percentage varies from 15 to 18% for two or three years, 
but what it does is incentivizes the school to help you learn how to code and get into a job fast. And in order to protect the consumer, the student in this case, the school has a minimum salary amount that you have to make. Usually it's 40 or 50,000. And if you make less than that, you never have to pay. It also has consumer protections if you make a lot of money. So if you make over six figures and you're paying a percentage of your salary, they'll also tell you what the cap amount is. And the cap means that no matter how successful you are, you'll never have to pay more than 20 or 30,000 for this tuition. And so as you're evaluating each school, make sure to ask them about scholarships, income sharing, ask them about GI Bill, and specifically evaluate their income sharing programs because they all differ from school to school. So this wraps up the video on Coding Bootcamps 101. But before we wrap up, I wanted to share two bonus rules uh, that's gonna help you succeed on this journey. So to summarize all of the points mentioned above, picking a coding bootcamp is not an easy task and we advise that you speak to admission teams, students, and people you'll find on Career Karma to make the best decision for you. In this video, we covered ways you can pay for a coding bootcamp, which involves income sharing that doesn't require you to pay upfront. We also covered options like doing a coding bootcamp that's online or in person, full-time, part-time, or self-paced, which means that you can start in the next few months by doing something online or part-time, and you don't even have to quit your job. And most importantly, Career Karma provides you with a way for you to explore your career transition so you even know if this career transition is for you. As a bootcamp graduate and co-founder of Career Karma, I'm here to answer any questions and help you create your personal roadmap. If you wanna help yourself and start now, subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos from me and my co-founders and post in the comments below whether you're considering full-time, part-time, or self-paced boot camps, and I'll personally answer any questions and provide you with my opinion and a roadmap. Let's break in.